It's all about the conversation. That's what podcasting is all about. So let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 202 with Baratunda Thurston from How to Citizen, Season 4. Good morning, uh, Arrow. And I am uh, I'm tired today. I am uh, I'm having a really tricky week, if Ooh. I'm going to be honest. Um, just lots of obstacles showing up in my way, uh, including an airline I will not name. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I'll... It, it, it rhymes with uh, Shamerica. Uh, <laughs> Shamerican share. I don't know if that rings any bells for you or any of your listeners out there. And uh, But I'm grateful to be here with you, and I appreciate it. How are you doing? Today? Doing fantastic. You know, I, I love it when moments are like this, when, when you do have those challenges, because it's almost like the universe is saying, okay, you're missing out on something. I'm going to slow your wheels down just a bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in front of you again. Now find it. Yes. And sometimes the universe throws out one of those spike strips uh, in front of your wheels uh, and targets flamethrowers at your vehicle uh, with incendiary devices as well. But I get the same metaphor, same, same. You know, we're on the same page here. The universe can be a real pain in the booty. Yes, absolutely. That's when you say, "Okay, what what are you looking for? Come on. I'm here. I'm I'm present. I got my pen. What do you want? Literally, dude, I was screaming at them like, why? Why is it happening to me? Um, And then, you know, I feel a little bit self selfish saying that because there's a lot of people going through a lot that's yeah. way worse right now um, well that's what i was going to ask you about it you know maybe there's something that's preparing you for that so that when when you bump into that person you're going to say wow you know my world really isn't as bad as it you know what i think it is but now i can uh, have compassion for you and I'm, I'm a better listener for it yeah and it, it's um that's a really healthy way to look at it and it's one that i'm I'm trying to practice. I've certainly preached it before. Yeah. Certainly <laughs> preached it. So this is also like my sermons coming back at me. Uh, uh, is that, are you doing the things you telling other people? That's to do? right. That's, yeah. and, and so the fact that you know, I'm I'm inside of a home that has power and isn't flooded yep. or frozen or burnt out. Uh, that I got food in the fridge and and this crispy, beautiful sounding microphone to speak with you. Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm so glad that you brought up the microphone because, I mean, as you jump into season number four of How to Citizen, it really is about those that reach it in their moment of now, which could be today or it could be six years from now. But but you're putting something out there that is very effective to the future listener. Wow. Uh, thank you for saying that. That's that's literally our goal. We, we, we want to we want to affect the future. We want to remind the people who listen to our show, that they can affect the future. Uh, I think a lot of us feel powerless. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of us are told we are powerless. You know, we uh, we see banks fail, and oh. we see you know superheroes come in and rescue, and uh, and it's a, it can be a little bit of a reminder. There's those with power and those without. Yeah, and yeah. and that's not really true. It's true if we believe it, just like. A dollar has value is true if we believe it, but based on elemental basic laws of physics, a dollar means nothing. The universe don't know nothing about no dollar, (laughs) but we agree to the fiction so deeply that we're willing to show up to a place called work to earn it. Yeah. And our our landlords and, and, and mortgage companies accept it as compensation for us to stay with a place to live and we can get food for it. It's, it's wild, you know, how powerful our minds are and what we choose to believe. And so I think we can choose to believe, and in this case, remember that we're powerful and that we live in this system, you know, predicated on people power. That's literally what democracy breaks down to. And and so we have a lot of ways we can exercise that power. And what we do with our show is try to remind people of that by showing them through our guests Mm -hmm. who are doing amazing things, sometimes huge and beautiful, sometimes small and beautiful, always beautiful, that there's ways to, wield our power uh, that serve us, not just individually, but collectively. There's ways to show up in our communities. There's ways to invest in relationships and not just be transactional about everything so that we can interpret this word citizen, which has been so used to separate us from Mm -hmm. each other, Mm -hmm. from the natural world and the planet, uh, and instead use it to build a bridge between us and to invite us all into our power. 
to shape our future. You bring up such a beautiful point because uh, the city of Charlotte just recently, it was last week, announced that they finally, after all of these years, have realized that I-77, which went through a neighborhood in Charlotte, divided the people. And now they're going mm. to spend millions of dollars to get this, this the, these citizens back together again. But something as simple as a highway, which was needed, divided the people. So, so we built it. Right. We took yeah. a metaphor yeah. and we made it actual. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and every city, every community, most communities, I should say, have a version of that, whether it's it's, you know, we've dammed a river, we've built a highway, we've destroyed a neighborhood to build a highway. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we know the the texture and, and the economic uh, resources of the people who get bulldozed by that infrastructure and we take our great capacity to create and we use it to destroy Um, and we don't have to do that you know we can build different types of connectivity and different types of infrastructure so we have a lot of people on this season who i'm so excited about including uh north carolina resident uh which is the the most specific way to refer to her adrian marie brown she's a facilitator author activist beautiful human being and she lives in durham um and she is the the kickoff to this season, oh. reminding us of ways that we can citizen in in much more local, like even in our household level ways, which I think is so important because a lot of us feel frustrated at our inability seemingly to affect the quote unquote real power. You know, what Washington's up to, what New York <laughs> is up to. And it's like, what are we up to? You know, what are you up to right now? in your home with your child with your partner with your family with your employees and your colleagues and how can we start practicing a a way of relating to each other that we want to see our quote-unquote leaders exhibit toward each other and toward us because we create them right they emerge from our schools and our churches and our sports you know teams and our extracurriculars and so how we show up in these small places is how you know we show up in these big places too. Your podcast does something that most don't. You go the extra one hundred miles by featuring the blog in there with with you know how you should reflect on the message that's being received in the podcast. You know how can you be informed even more politically participate. I mean for readers and listeners, they're two completely separate people, and they're going to get a lot when they even just read your blog. Thank you for that, man. Um, you've really done some homework. That's more than most. I'm gonna give you some extra points for this one. Five stars, five stars <laughs> when the when the radio hosting uh, app you know shows up in my feed. We have this way of looking at citizen as a verb that says, look, it's four things. You show up and participate. Yep. You understand power and all the different ways we can wield it, which is a lot more than voting for other people to exercise power for us. It's important, but not everything. We invest in relationships with ourselves, with others, and the planet around us because there's no separation between these things. And we value the collective self, not just the individual self. And what you're referring to with our, you know, each episode of our show, and we're at over 50 episodes now, we have these detailed show notes. Mm-hmm. And we always leave people with things they can do. Uh, I'm not just about philosophizing. Though I did major in philosophy in college, I, I also, you know, want people to feel this and practice this. Like democracy cannot be an intellectual idea. It's got to be a verb. It's got to be a practice. And so with any kind of practice, we need some exercises, right? <laughs> we, we need some, we need to get our reps in. A lot of our muscles have atrophied because no one's asked us to do anything other than shop. And, and so we offer three ways in. We say, look, you can reflect just to yourself. It's like a single player mode on a game. You know, you don't need any friends around. You don't need to coordinate no conference calls, knock on a stranger's doors. This is just you, yourself, and you thinking, giving time to consider. So that's the personal reflection. Then we said, look, there's, we all got some gaps in knowledge. You know, being woke, I think is preferable to being asleep. I'm still not gonna sign up for a pejorative interpretation of that word. Oh, you want, so you want people asleep at the wheel. Okay. But I also think there's um, risk in, in declaring oneself woke because no one is fully awake. We all have some level of dozing going on. And so we all have something to learn. And so let's go be open about that be generous with ourselves and humble and let's get more informed so we give people some research some article you can read some other podcast you can listen to and then publicly participate this is do something with others 
Uh, and and it, again, it doesn't have to be a voter registration drive, though I encourage that, especially yeah. in the great yeah. state of North Kakalaki. But uh, it, it can be participating in your community in some way. There's probably a neighborhood council <laughs> that is operating in your name that you're not showing up mm -hmm, for. Mm -hmm. Or there's a condo board or a homeowners association or an interest group at your office uh, or a resource group. Like there are so many clubs and organizations plus online, right? And, and a lot of what we do online can positively affect how we show up offline if we enter with that intention. It can also obviously corrode uh, as well. So yeah, this thanks for highlighting. It's all this is at howtocitizen.com. And I keep, I'm just remembering you're in Charlotte. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I got a, I got a special way for, for your audience to show up uh, and, and kick it with me. I'm going to be in Charlotte in what? a few weeks. Yes, at the Charlotte Center, uh, the Ideas Festival uh, at the Mint Museum, <gasps> Thursday, March 30th, 7 p.m. Um, so so check it out. Use your, it's the charlottecenter.org. They got the tickets. It's fully open to the public. It's a whole ideas festival. Um, and for some reason, I think they're letting me like kick off the whole thing. Oh so, my God. <laughs> yeah. So we can continue this conversation uh, you know, in real life. Well, I hope when you come to Charlotte, you get to sit down and spend some time with Braxton Winston. My God, okay. this, this guy is, is such a force in this city. He's an everyday man who said, mm. look, I am part of your community. And, and now he's mayor pro temp. This guy has really grown in, into somebody who is going to be a major league leader. And what, what's so funny is that everybody keeps asking, are you going to, are you going to run for, uh, for mayor? He says, can we just deal with what's going on right now? Can, can we can we just be present and and so I mean yeah. but I hope you get to meet Braxton when you come. Well, now that you've put it out there, I'm sure I will. Um, and thank you for that tip because I was literally like, well, I don't I know people in Raleigh Durham. I don't know that I know people in Charlotte. Yeah. Well, now I know you and I'm about to know Braxton. So wow. we got a little party in this way of the world right now. It almost feels like human rights are being unrespected, that people are going, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, look at the way that the Russians are treating the Ukrainians. And it, it's like nobody's doing anything about it. And we feel like, well, if they're not going to do anything about it, well, then I'm not going to do anything about my community. And that that is a bad reflection. It is. Um, you know, I, I, I cited Adrian Marie. Brown earlier, uh, she reminds us of like the lessons we can learn from fiction um, and also from from actual science, you know, science fiction and science fact. And mm. one of the science facts that's true is uh, there are these patterns. You've probably seen them in beautiful repeating pattern art uh, reflective of the concept of a fractal. Basically, a pattern repeats at a really small level is also represented at a really large level. And we can see this, you know, you look at the structure of our lungs and you look at a forest and they're kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and broccoli looks the same too. <laughs> so it's like, okay, at the scale of the, the molecular structure of our lungs, at the scale of broccoli, which we can hold in our hand, at the scale of a forest, which holds all of us uh, in a living state by processing this air for us to breathe, it's all the same. And so what we see over there, what we experience out there, to some degree, we also experience in here mm -hmm. and we're there's no we're porous right that stuff can affect us and how we show up the way a parent's behavior affects how a child believes they can show up and vice versa the way we show up can affect what we see happening in the world because we are in part creating that world uh, and so i want to acknowledge that yes the world feels like it's getting more coarse mm. uh, and and harsher and so that's an invitation for us to be more loving and and softer with each other, to try to shift the direction and the momentum of that which we perceive into that which we want to perceive. And, and so that's that's a level at which we can approach these things. There's also like, are you voting though? <laughs> you know, like, and and we need to do all of it. You know, we need to be asking how we're spending our money, but also. You know, is infinite growth the best model for measuring the success of an economy? When we apply infinite growth to cells in a body, we call that malignant cancer. Mm. And we do everything we can to shut that down because it will destroy the host. Mm -hmm. But when we think at the level of economies, we encourage it absolutely without limit. And we are realizing that the planet has limits, that we have limits. And so we've unleashed an infinite resource burning growth model on a finite planet mm -hmm. 
and we're experiencing the results of that contradiction. So we've got to redesign the whole incentive structure uh, around how we do money and how yeah, we value things yeah, and how absolutely. we value each other. So yeah, Russia is acting the fool. They are being monstrous. And in some ways, in different ways, certainly less harsh for most of us, we have some monstrosity and some monstrous capabilities in us. And so how do we show up with love for yeah. the people of Ukraine? Yep. How do we show up with love for ourselves and the people who we find disagreeable in our own backyards? Mm -hmm. When you sit down in the same space with someone like John Alexander and, and he comes up with the question, what are you trying to do in the world that's so big that you need others? All of that, that would suck the air right out of my lungs because I would, I would have to have at least an hour of writing to come up with some sort of answer. Yeah. Yeah. John Alexander um, is, is my brother from another mother. He's a, <laughs> uh, he's a white British man, former ad exec. <laughs> and, and I'm a black American man uh, subject to many ads in my life. <laughs> so we have like a assailant and victim here. <laughs> but um, John has written this beautiful book called Citizens. Uh, why the answer, to, the solution to everything lays with all of us, uh, approximating that subtitle. And he got sick and tired, literally, of selling ads and of telling this story that says all we can do is consume, mm -hmm. uh, which emerged from a story that said we were just subjects to a monarch, an authoritarian of some kind, and that we're moving into another story, a new story of, of us being citizens and collaborating much more uh, and, and finding our purpose and our community, not just through buying stuff uh, or, or being forced to buy stuff in certain cases. So, you know, one of the ways that John and I, we, we met in person. A lot of my stuff has been through Zoom, but it was really powerful to be in the same room with him. Is he said what you just said, you know, one of the ways we can citizen is to ask ourselves, you know, what's something that I'm trying to do that's so big that I need someone else to help me do it? Mm -hmm. That when you ask a question that way, you know, because we're, we're all propagandized to believe we're alone that we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, that when we uh, don't make enough money, it's our fault, that when we get sick, it's our fault, that when we're doing badly in school, it's our fault. Not that, oh, we should have a study group. Oh, we should have a healthcare system which doesn't punish people for being temporarily unemployed right. or burden an employer with the healthcare of their workers. What kind of paternalistic setup is that anyway? <laughs> so. Like I employ someone, I don't want to know about this person's health situation. It's literally none of my business, right. but the government forces it to be my business because we're not collectively taking care of all of ourselves. And we could, we could choose something different. So that's getting big and drifty. It might be as simple as, you know, for me, I had a problem with the gate uh, on my front yard. It was busted and I needed to rebalance it. And I'm very strong. I'm proud of my strength. Harrow, I'm so proud of, of my physical fitness and I couldn't handle this gate. Oh my God. And, and, and my landlord was out of town and he couldn't come and help me. So this was a problem so big <laughs> that I needed some help. <laughs> and, and I could have hurt myself trying to do it by myself. Mm -hmm. Instead, I asked the neighbor and he said, yes. And now there's, an, there's a new connection, there's an excuse. And when we ask someone for help, we're also giving them something. We're giving them our trust. We're giving them our vulnerability. We're giving them an opportunity to be a part of our lives, even in something as simple as helping lift a gate yep. or raise a barn or, or bring in a crop mm -hmm. or build a bridge or remove a highway separating a city from itself or, or grow a garden mm -hmm. and feed people. There's so much that we could do because there's because we need each other to do it. And building that muscle, right? We can buy stuff all day long by ourselves. Yep. We can't build things worthy of us by ourselves. And, and so that's what I heard in John's invitation. And we've encouraged our listeners to practice that in ways big and small, you know, which is the theme of our season. Yeah, we got to go big, but we got to go small. We got to go small because I want this to be accessible. And I don't want people to feel like I need a PhD in political science <laughs> or I have to be a, a federal reserve board governor right. to affect change. I don't, you don't have to be a senator. You don't have to be a mayor pro tem. Yeah. You just have to be you. That's it. That's in community with others.
That's it. You've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. I need more time with you, not just 20 minutes, man. I need some serious time with you. <laughs> well, I have uh, I've really enjoyed this time with you. And let's let's uh, stay in touch about my Charlotte visit. Maybe we can reconnect sooner than either of us anticipate. Well, you just planted it in the universe. So let's make it happen. All right, Arrow. You be brilliant today. OK, sir. You stay brilliant. Thank you.